The elections in March left Italians with a hung parliament. Now the country's two populist parties are trying to cobble together a coalition and lead the country in an entirely new direction. Outsiders in the past, they both reject austerity and want to renegotiate Italy's massive debt, putting them on a collision course with the European Union. Interesting times, interesting round table with David Foster. Brussels beware, together the League and Five Star Movement are anti-establishment, anti-migrant and Eurosceptic. If those populists take power in Italy, are we seeing the further rise of the right in Europe? Will Italy be the next country to leave the EU? The Five Star Movement and far-right party The League have finally agreed to form a government. Both parties reject EU austerity measures and are aiming to renegotiate the country's debt. But they have different outlooks in a host of other areas. What will it mean for Italy's future and for Europe? It's taken 11 weeks of negotiations to break the March election stalemate. Five Star and the League won more than 50% of the vote, but not enough to rule alone. Cui gli italiani non sono andati a votare per partito preso, destro, sinistra, ma hanno finalmente, finalmente evidenziato i problemi che non sono di destra o di sinistra, sono delle persone. Luigi Di Maio, leader of the Five Star Movement, and Matteo Salvini, the league's leader, have held talks with President Sergio Mattarella over the approval of their coalition government and choice for prime minister. Giuseppe Conte. Giuseppe Conte is a law professor and a complete unknown in politics. He's seen as a compromise candidate who can balance the demands of the rival parties. Conte was behind Five Star's pledge to abolish over 400 laws which it says will free up the economy. Last week the party leaders published joint policy proposals, calling for an end to EU austerity measures, an increase in tax cuts and a guaranteed basic income for the poor. Quindi nessuno ha niente da temere dalle nostre politiche economiche che saranno molto diverse rispetto a quelle degli ultimi anni che hanno portato il debito a crescere i 300 miliardi. Quindi il nostro obiettivo è far crescere l'economia italiana per ridurre il debito. What does Italy's move to the right mean for the European Union? It is the Eurozone's third largest economy, but it has been stuck in a permanent state of stagnation since the financial crisis of 2008. Some fear this new government could tip Italy into a Greek-style crisis. De Maio and Salvini want a review of the EU's fiscal rules, but have stopped short of calling for Italy to immediately leave the Euro. What's occurring in Italy mirrors the rise of the right across Europe. A report by Bloomberg shows that support for populist radical right parties in Europe is higher than it's ever been in the last 30 years. The new coalition agrees with the anti-immigrant ethos and plans to deport around half a million illegals. De Maio has asked international observers to hold off on their criticism for now. Nazionale, fateci partire prima, poi ci criticate, avete tutto il diritto, però almeno fateci partire. Will the new government's economic reforms save Italy from a deepening crisis? Or will its demands cause tension in the EU and risk a growing divide with close allies? The coalition is the first of its kind in Western Europe. Italy is now entering uncharted waters. So let the conversation begin. Lively one I'm expecting from Rome. We're joined by Manlio Di Stefano, an MP for Italy's Five Star Movement. Also in Rome, we have Franco Pavoncello, a professor of political science at John Cabot University. With me in the studio, Luigi Scazzieri from the Centre for European Reform. And Nicola Celotti teaches and researches EU diplomacy at Loughborough University, uh, London. Gentlemen, very good to have you all here. Uh, Franco, Professor Franco, can I come to you first of all? William Hague. A uh, former British Foreign Secretary has written an article this week and he says he was called by a senior Italian, I, unnamed, who said to him, in Britain to govern is difficult, in Italy it is pointless. Well, do you, do you know, understand the sentiment? Um, that is an old story. I think that uh, um, it's a bit overdone in the sense that uh, 
in Italy you can certainly govern, uh, but let's keep in mind that uh, since you, Italy entered the euro, uh, the space for maneuvering when you govern has been essentially reduced. And that is something to keep in mind when we see the arrival of new governments, because as past governments, uh, the present uh, probable government is going to have to deal with the straitjacket uh, that uh, is available to governments uh, who are in the Eurozone. And I think that that is an important aspect of the present situation. Which leads us to, to Manlio, Member of Parliament, hoping, I believe, to, to perhaps be a minister in the next Italian government. It's going to be a difficult task with the constraints as outlined by the professor there. How are you going to do this? Well, I think that Italy, that Europe has nothing to fear uh, if it understands that collaboration with the old member states is important, it's fundamental uh, to improve the economic situation and the welfare of the European citizens. That's the, that's the central point. Then we can discuss about the way we, we, we reach this goal. Uh, we think that the austerity measures have failed, so we have to go back to, to, to that point and discuss together with the uh, allies that we have in Europe how to uh, go forward. But this is the point. I mean, if you talk to any Italian citizen, and I will guess uh, other uh, European ones, uh, what is the main problem in this moment? They will always say that there is less and less welfare and more and more austerity. So this is the basic point for us. OK, uh, big tax cuts, increased spending, a universal basic income, just three of the things that you said you're going to do, and I think universal basic income is going to be one of the first. How are you going to do that when you don't have any money? And this is, this is the, the most important question. Uh, are you sure we don't have any money? I mean, I've seen this last government finding uh, 20 billion euros in 15 minutes to save the banking system, actually to save some party bank. Uh, and they fund it. I mean, the, 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 the real question is, what's the political goal? What's the political uh, beliefs? Where do you want to put the money at your back? That's the, the final, the final uh, uh, question you have to, we have to answer. And we fund already the, what, the, the coverage, the economic coverage for all our reforms. Obviously, there will be need to cut where they are uh, expanded in, in a bad way in this, in, this, in this moment and to put them in other sectors. Okay. I, I will talk about the defense, I will talk about the political uh, uh, privileges. There are tons of there, of them, just the way where you use it. Let's bring this back to the studio and ask two people who I think are quite sceptical about, about the coalition. Is this, and either one of you can jump in or both, is this the arrival of the far right in Italy as a legitimate movement that is going to change the face of European politics? Uh, I mean, legitimate, for sure. I mean, uh, this, these parties were voted by the Italian electorate, so no question about it. And then uh, it's very good that they, they, they were able to form, or they are able to form a government. Uh, I, I'm more skeptical about whether they will be able to change the face of Italy, not of Europe, because uh, I'm, I, am, I, I don't fully agree with the, the analysis that, that uh, Mario Di Stefano has just made. First of all, it's also a little bit of a myth that uh, Italy has been going through huge austerity cuts. That was true for probably through three years, 2011, 2013, So the massive 14. unemployment rate, particularly amongst the youth, is just yes. a result of what? It's a result of the very low productivity and growth of the country, which is something that no politician from, center, uh, from left to the right, and definitely not this government, has ever put at the center of the attention. Why d does Italy grow so little? And it's not because of money, or it's because the basic of Itali uh, economy and the base of the Italian state should be restructured. Why, why is the five-star movement in La Liga apparently more popular now than it was according to polls, before the election? Well, I think the same two factors that drove their very good performance in the election are still at play. Well, one of them is uh, the, the poor condition of the economy, high unemployment uh, and low growth. And the second one is the migration crisis, which has affected Italy for the past few years. This is what enabled the League to do well, especially because of migration and the five star because of the economy. And this has also driven their programme in the sense that it's based on obtaining further fiscal leeway from Brussels 
and curtailing migration, uh, if, if possible, unilaterally, while also asking for greater solidarity at the European level. Now, will they be able to achieve this? I'm fairly sceptical, because economically, as, as we've argued, the demands put them on a collision course with the EU, although they have been moderated in, in recent days. We'll, we'll have to see what shape they exactly take. In migration, it may be more possible to convince the rest of Europe that actually what Italy needs is more help in managing flows, and especially in striking agreements with third countries to manage yeah. migration. Manley, I'm going to come to you now and then go to Franco to, to respond to some of the things you said, because my, my question is going to be, where do you believe the European Union, over the course of the last decade or so, and I'm sure you do believe this, has let Italy down? Therefore, what are you going to do and challenge the European Union to do differently? Well, first of all, let me say that I'm... I, 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 I'm I'm sick and tired of listening to this argument that um, we are everybody sure that this new government will not be able to do something. The only certainty that we have is that the other ones didn't do it. So let's let's give us at least a chance to make it. Then said that I think that it's it's not something. I mean, Europe has not to be reformed hundred percent. Obviously, there are tons of things that are very good, very well working. I mean. Uh, starting from the uh, uh, mobility of human beings to all the, 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 the very good thing, things that we have. But where they lack has been for sure the, uh, the way they treated the, the, the immigration uh, uh, issue. I've been working on that for years because I'm the president of the Committee for the Migration at the Council of Europe. And I can see with my eyes every month that this is always considered to be an Italian problem. I mean, something, someone is, is thinking that they just need to pay and we can afford everything. It's not like this. The other one, and we are really stressing a lot of that, is the welfare. I mean, uh, someone has said in the studio that we are not under a big austerity or crisis or whatever. How do you, how do you call more than six billion people under the uh, absolute line of poverty? I mean, this is something that never, never happened in Italy. We are reaching all the negative peaks of our history. Yeah, OK, so, so, so what does the European Union have to do to placate you and your coalition government? Well, not, not to placate us, but to, to help the people. It's, it's just the people, to, I'm, you're absolutely it, right, the Italian people who voted you in. Yeah, I mean, it's the, point, the point is to uh, uh, live in these ties a bit more uh, wide in order that we can... Uh, 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 spend some money where, where we need it. And I think it is something that will also save the EU in, in some way, because it's not just an Italian problem. If you look at in, in, the, in, in the neighbors of the European Union, not, not Germany and France for sure, it, this problem is growing everywhere. So if we don't tackle this issue as soon as we can, all the countries will face some, some, some kind of political instability. So, so let, let's, let's throw this to Franco, if we may now. Um, just one, just one yeah, 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 carry on, just finish, yeah. Yeah, we are lucky that in Italy there is the Fire Star Movement taking this sense of, uh, a, a, um, in such a way, revenge of the Italian people and bringing it to a democratic political uh, party. In other parts of the EU, it's not like this, and you see what, what's going on in, in other countries. So. I think we need cooperation. That's, that's the only point. OK, Franco, sorry to delay you. Uh, to come to you, the economy and migration. Any movement from the European Union to satisfy the Italian electorate? Uh, or is this doomed to be a battle to the death? Well, you see, the, the problem is that uh, when, when you run for... Uh, when, when you try to win an election, you present some recipes that once you win the election and you move into the government might not really be the best recipe if you want to run a government itself. Now, uh, the issue is this. Um, Italy needs uh, perhaps some uh, space of maneuver in terms of uh, financial and economic concessions so as to restart the country uh, at the economic level. But let's not forget that Italy has debt for 130% of the GDP. And uh, in order to have uh, some sort of sympathy from Europe, you must present recipes that are going to guarantee growth. 
uh, if you propose to have uh, a, a, a more benign attitude of Europe in order to protect welfare or in order to reduce taxes, and uh, you don't really give a recipe on how to restart the economic life of the country, for instance, by increasing productivity, which could be done by making some public works uh, that are going to facilitate uh, commerce and trade and production in Italy, then uh, Europe might be less interested in, uh, uh, in, in coming towards the uh, expectation of the mm. Italian government. Do we, do we want to split this into the economy and, and migration? Um, and let's talk about, since we're on it, the, the, the economy at this moment. You, you might need money from the European Central Bank to get all of this going, but the, under its rules it can't lend to a country that is so heavily indebted uh, as Italy is at the moment. It's an impossible situation unless concessions are made. Uh, yes. Um, Italian economy would need, probably, uh, I, I agree with Franco, would need more investments. And that's what is a bit appalling from, from, uh, from the proposals that we've seen so far, which is, again, more, uh, more protection for, yeah. uh, uh, for people who are retiring. Again, this is a category who is, who is already... I suppose what I'm trying to get at, I'm not, I yeah. didn't mean to butt in, I was just thinking out loud. Do you think Italy or the people of Italy are going to say enough when the government can't deliver, we, 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 we might as well be out of the European Union, we might as well be out of the, the Euro. I would say that it's not unthinkable at, at this stage because this skepticism has been on the rise mm. for the last 10 years and uh, everything which is now working in the country has been associated mostly to, to, to the external, be it the European Union, be it Germany, be it migrants. So I think uh, that that's a possibility that at a certain point we, we will reach like a, a break a breaking point. So I, 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 I and, and that is existential to the European Union, is not it? If Italy says, or the people of Italy, and we must get back to it, it is the people of Italy say, listen, we can't put up with this institution any longer. We've always been at the bottom of the the the, the list when gifts are being given out, migration isn't being sorted, the euro is doing us no favours whatsoever. L let's just forget the whole thing. That's existential to the European Union, isn't it? That's why this is so important. Well, yes, one I reason mean, why it is. My view is that initially we'll have a phase of uh, confrontation which won't escalate to that level for, for quite a while. Then, of course, if things get to the stage that you just illustrated, then th that would be an immense problem. Uh, I'm still sceptical that they will get to, to that stage also because an Italian exit from the Eurozone would have a lot of collateral damage on the European partners. So people will, will strive to avoid that. On, on what the government can achieve economically, I think a lot of it depends on how its proposals are presented and what proposals it actually comes up with once it is in government. So we saw a draft of the program a few days ago and then a, another draft of the coalition agreement, which was a lot moderate, it, it, more moderate. It didn't include but Address, the demand, these, address uh, these points to Manlia. Your, your second, he's, uh, hoping to, he's hoping to get a ministry. Absolutely. So the second uh, proposal didn't include the demand for, for 250 billion of, of debt reduction. It said that the EU should, for instance, count investments, uh, uh, not count investments as part of the deficit. So on some of these more, uh, less confrontational proposals, there might be room to discuss at the European level. But it all matters how they're framed and how you meet, make sure that Brussels perceives them as constructive. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that you uh, realise that this government is, uh, is coming from a, a, a programmatic coalition. So the first draft that you've seen it was just the sum up of the two parties' ideas, you know? So the 250 billion reduction, all these things that were cut, were, honestly, were not on our side. So when, you, when we came to the, last, the final version, it was uh, our, I would say, our vision, or at least closer to our vision. But obviously, this contract is made of two parties. So. In our original electoral program, is everything is there in the final contract, but, but I mean, could be even different at the origin. So I think that everyone has to realize that we need to set up all the steps and then start with the government able to do what is written there. We're just talking about the economic problem, not the EU. We want to stay in the EU and we will do everything that we can to stay in the EU. But obviously, you have to consider the, the, the fact that people are year after year more uh, sad. 
about about the EU. Uh, okay, well, can, can I go to Franco yes. first and, and ask um, what you hear from Manlio? Does that give you optimism that there is going to be um, an easing of the the two sides of this potential conflict, or do you not believe what he's saying at all about leaving the EU and the euro? Well, I. I think that what we must understand is that it's not very easy to leave the EU. As, uh, as, as the British uh, experience shows, you don't just get up in the morning and you move away. I mean, they, the British were not, the, the Britons were not even in, in, the, in the Euro. Um, so this is a very difficult situation. And I think that what is important to understand is that uh, you cannot uh, uh, f clash head on uh, against the European Union even before you start the government and then hope that they're going to be reassured. And I believe that as we move closer to the government and the, the minister are being chosen, I think that the, the attempt to reassure Europe that there's going to be a closer and closer attention to serious negotiation and dialogue might very well yeah. be a development. Can, can, can we get round to, to the migration issue? Because that is one about which so many Italians feel aggrieved. Can I bring that back, back to the studio? This hasn't been addressed at all, has it? And will... Uh, the new government do something about it? Well, I mean, in a sense, the Italian government already in the past months has moved towards a policy on migration which involved deals with Libya and so on, so aimed at really curtailing flows. It was a very hard policy. Now, what the coalition draft says is that in addition to this, it wants to increase the number of people whose asylum applications are rejected who are returned to their home countries. And at the European level, it asks for a reform of the Dublin regulation so that the country in which people arrive, namely Italy, is not the country that's responsible or not the only country that's responsible for processing their applications. And it asks for more solidarity in, in uh, striking deals with these third countries. Now, this is probably the right way forward for European migration policy to go in general. It, I don't see much leeway, unfortunately, at the European level for a, for a reform of, of the Dublin regulation, but perhaps uh, th th there is a build-up of momentum uh, to uh, strike deals with third countries and better deal with the phenomenon. I think migration is, is a much easier topic for the EU and the new Italian government to uh, agree on, in a sense, as long as the ideas are presented in a constructive way and so on. I agree, I, I, I agree with, um, with Luigi. I think that uh, the, the, the real difficulty is on uh, economic issues. On migration, there might be some clashes here and there, but not very big, and sometimes they even go, might go to, into the same direction. Uh, so two things uh, following uh, up what have, has been said. On the one hand, yeah, I think that rub the reform in the Dublin regulation might be difficult, especially because of the so-called Visegrad countries. So the uh, four countries in, in Central and Eastern Europe, which paradoxically are very, very, uh, uh, Salvini and the League are, are very uh, sort of fond uh, of, but they are basically the ones who put the, uh, the brake on, on, the, on a possible uh, commission scheme about relocation, uh, relocating uh, migrants. The second point is about uh, repatriation agreements with third countries because even if you have uh, illegal immigra immigrants in the countries and we know that the, 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 um, the numbers are around 500,000 uh, uh, people of uh, 500,000 illegal immigrants it, it's not in first of all it's to find the money mm. to repatriate right and second even to have the agreement with, with, with the uh, country of our origin. we have to go back yes. to, to Italy at this particular moment because we're, we're wrapping up the program and, and, and since you're hoping for massive elevation in this new government badly um, perhaps to be a senior minister looking after the deals with the European Union. Uh, let me ask you how optimistic you are that this, this coalition will survive more than a year and what it will take. I, I'm pretty optimistic, yes, because we, we, we have created everything on a specific program. We want to achieve this. And I think that uh, starting from President Mattarella and and then the EU uh, diplomacy and the EU uh, establishment, everyone has understood that we are willing to, to, to do something that is in cooperation with all the institutions that we are dealing with since here. So I think that there will be no problem for that. But obviously, we have a, we have a program that we want to protect it because it was voted by Italian people. Yeah. So um, I think that if they understand it, we, 
will be place for good cooperation. Last word from Rome, word. Uh, Franco, quickly if you would. Italian politics, fun or frightening? I think that uh, what we're going to see is a period of, uh, uh, you know, quite complicated politics in Italy. And I think that one of the reasons might be also that in Parliament, this majority, especially in the Senate, is not very large. And we are seeing the union of two contrasting programs coming together. And I think that in the long run, it might be hard to get everybody to agree to support this government when the majority is so slim. Well, I didn't exactly get an answer, but we got a description there. Thank you very much indeed uh, from Italy. I think the answer is going to be both fun and frightening, both for the European Union as an institution, for the Italian people and for any new coalition government. Thank you all very much indeed for taking part in this discussion. I'm sure we sh shall come back to it, but for now that is it from Roundtable from me, David Foster, and thank you for watching. Hope to have your company next time. Goodbye.